Our next speaker, Miriam Ibrahim, has a story just as personal, and we're so excited to welcome her here. Miriam Ibrahim is the Director of Global Mobilization and co-founder of the Tahrir al-Nisa Foundation. The TAF was founded in 2019 to address the unique challenges of women facing domestic abuse and religious persecution. Since that time, TAF has grown quickly and helped many women and children in the U.S. and around the world caught, caught in domestic abuse and religious persecution through their relief efforts and advocacy. Through her work, Miriam has continued her, to receive international publicity. She has spoken before the European Union and Pope Francis. She also continues to speak publicly about religious freedom issues and on behalf of those oppressed globally. Thank you for being here, Miriam. The floor is yours. Thank you, Roshan, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, for me, coming um, to speak in front of you today is um, it's a dream of every woman and girl in my country. So uh, my name is Miriam Ibrahim. I'm from Sudan, originally from Sudan. And um, my story is in unique as um, it is, but it's a story of million women and girls around the world today. Um, I was born um, in a refugee camp in a small city in Eastern Sudan called Gadarif. My mother originally from Ethiopia. She flew war, which something happened until today, and settled in a refugee camp. My father is from Darfur, is a war region also in Sudan, in the west side of Sudan. Um, um, the reason I would say my story isn't unique because it's involved the differences. My mother is a Christian and my father was a Muslim. So I grew up um, in a Christian home, and I was raised by my mother. And um, fast forward, growing up, I faced a lot of challenges as a um, minority girl in a staunch uh, Muslim society. The first challenge you have to face in the school, the education system, that we don't have access to religion education for our faith but we are forced to study um, Islamic teaching. And the school system is, we have four main subjects, Arabic, English, and um, Islamic study, and um, math. If you do not pass those four subjects, you won't be able to move to the, other, the next grade. So therefore, we are forced to study different belief and different faith in order for us to have access to education. So, um, and I do just believe when you just look at me today, you will uh, think of all women who fleeing war and home is no longer safe home because they are different in faith, in gender, or belief, or, really, or ethnic group. Yazidi woman, Christian woman, across the, around the world today. So, hearing other speaker before me, I just realized how powerful this collusion and this group and this meeting today, because many of the topics that has been discussed today are far away from United Nations concern. And it's very important for the human dignity, that to have stability and had to have freedom and to have security in family and in society. And this won't happen, especially from where I came from and from my countries and uh, many neighboring countries in Africa on Middle East. These rights are being challenged by Islamic Sharia law. And I will say that, and I hope that um, my word won't offend anyone because I speak from my heart, I speak from experience, and I speak because I want to see change, and I want to see justice, and I want my children and any other children that to grow up in a safe society that are not being uh, weaponized and that they are not being given an options to give up their faith to have access to education or to, to marry someone from different faith. Um, my 
trial was very short, but it's something still happening and continuing. And, and I survived because I would say that the moment I walk into the court, I, I remember when the imam or the judge will ask me this one question I will be asked, whether I'm a Muslim or Christian. And I will always, my response was as a Christian, I'm a Christian. And this is, means that doesn't just about what I believe in. Even my children were paying punished because at the end of the trial, when I was fit, I faced um, the criminal charge, two charges, adultery and apostasy. When I was questioned about my marriage, I have to present my marriage certificate from the church, which is a proof of adultery because according to Sharia law, my marriage is invalid because I am a, I am a daughter of a Muslim man. I'm I'm considered a Muslim, technically, and then therefore as a Mus as a Muslim girl, I'm not authorized to marry to non-Muslim man, a Christian man. So my marriage certificate that I present to prove that I am I'm married was a proof of a crime, adultery. They were I was supposed to receive a hundred lashes, and then proof repeating that I am Christian because by the law, I am considered a Muslim because I'm a daughter of a Muslim father. When I say I'm Christian, that means I'm abandoning Islam. Therefore, I was, I was charged with apostasy, adultery and apostasy. My sentence was 100 lashes and death by hanging. My children was punished. So according to Sharia law, my children are illegitimate children because they came from wrong marriage. So at the end of the trial, when I was sentenced, my children are, su are supposed to, send, to be sent to an orphan. So my son spent in, um, eight months with me inside the prison, and I gave birth to my second child. And when I went to prison, I was pregnant. I gave birth to my daughter, my second child, while my legs in chains. So I'm sharing a bit of my story and, and it's happened nine years ago, but sadly it's still happening today. And it's happened in the past because I remember when I was, you know, talking with the, the prison guards uh, under interrogation, they will tell me, you are not the first. There's many like you because that's the normal. That's how we live. That's how we are. That's the law in our country. And I just realized that the law has been set. The law that I expect to, to be protected by is punishing me from the choices I made and is punishing my children and my family from the choices I made. So, um, and I wanna mention this. Remember that there is a girl named um, Deborah Samuel in Nigeria. When you remember the Article 18 and the human rights law, this, she is a student and virtually been tortured and burned alive by her fellow classmate. And I will think about what did they learn? What are they being taught in the school to treat each other that way? Because bully at the school is a big issue, you know, it's a serious matter, but that's what happened, and it was videotaped, and the world was that. And yet, the world is silent. It's unjust, and it's truth and reality of life for many religious minority around the world. When we say everybody has the right to believe or, or to, to, to adopt faith or not to believe or to express their belief, there's, there's many doesn't have that right. They don't have that right. And when they don't have that right, they get punished. When they try to, to, to force their right to, 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 you know, they face punishment. Not just execute, not just prison, but execution. So, you here today? There's many different topics, many different discussion, 
and, and I'm very encouraged to hear all this, what, what you all share. I would encourage you to continue to do that and to keep um, fighting and not to be afraid of speaking the truth and seeking the truth and defending others. Thank you.